Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. To join our community, go to myworstinvestmentever.com and receive these five free benefits. First, you get the risk reduction checklist I've labored over to create from the lessons I've learned from all my guests. Second, you get my weekly email to help you increase your investment return. Third, you get a 25% discount on all A Stotts Academy courses. Fourth, you get access to our Facebook community to get to know guests and fellow listeners. And finally, you get my curated list of the top 10 podcast episodes that I've done. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts from A Stotts Academy, and I'm here with featured guest Deborah Crow. Deborah, are you ready to rock? I am ready. Let's do it. Well, I'm going to introduce you to the audience. Deborah Crow is an executive and business coach. She has more than 30 years of global experience in top Fortune 500 companies in Canada, the United States, Europe, Asia, and Australia, leading and coaching C-suite leaders, executive professionals, teams, and businesses into success. Deborah started and has been the CEO of her company for 30 years and knows how to get to the top, hold that senior position, and balance career and family. In her coaching practice, she provides the tools, strategies, programs, and support to help create meaningful change in your life, ladies and gentlemen. Deborah, take a minute and fill any further tidbits about your life. Tidbits, wow. Thank you for the lovely introduction. It's it's nice to be with a fellow podcaster. Tell That's, us about that. Yeah, you know, similar to you, I I love talking to people. I love engaging in meaningful conversations. And we all have a story. We don't just land where we land. We have uh, bumps along the way and, and lessons and barriers and aha moments and just enjoying uh, speaking to, to leaders like you from all over the globe and highlighting that we're all imperfect and bringing kind of the language that we're not used to hearing in, in leadership in the business world. And I think COVID has kind of opened the doors to easily allow that language to come into discussion. Mm, interesting. Uh, you just reminded me of a book I read a long time ago called Awareness. Mm. And um, I'm just looking for it while we're talking. But uh, I think he was a Catholic priest. And basically he said, I think that it would be good. Uh, yeah, here it is. Anthony D. Mello. And I'll include it in the show notes. Awareness, conversations with the masters. And basically, uh, I love what he said when he said, I think when we introduce each other, we should start off by saying, nice to meet you. I'm an ass and you're an ass. <laughs> 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 that's good <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good way of starting the conversation so yeah you know I like that's what I thought about when I thought about imperfect you know your word imperfect is such a it's a great word because it gives us the comfort to be ourself you know and a lot of times in this world we're trying to put on a face and trying to put on a brave face and you know when you also when you work with leaders it's scary to reveal imperfections and you know there's times that you may not be appropriate to do it so it's just a I love that word and for the listeners who would like to learn more what's the best way to to learn more to engage to listen where where, where should they go so everything's on my website at debcrow.com and there's a tab there for the podcast and um, they can listen to whatever episode and mm -hmm. we're just starting season two next week so it's exciting that's very exciting. And we'll have all that also in the show notes. So ladies and gentlemen, follow up there. Well, now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it and then tell us your story. Well, you know, when you first told me that question, I, I took it with open, kind of an open-minded approach and, and knew there was kind of a metaphor value to it and I thought we could all talk about you know how we how we look at money how we spend money and I thought I think I think we need to go deeper here 
So I wanted to blow the doors off the, the metaphorical value of it. And I think the worst investment that I have done in my life is undervalue myself, my intellect, and what I bring to the table professionally, not in my personal life. And I think that kind of stems from being very young, 21, being in my second year of university, and my dad died. Mm. And he was 54. And I was going to school and I had to quit a year earlier to care give for him. So I grew up really, really quickly because at 21, I think that's kind of the second phase of our formidable years. That's where your parents really instill that, okay, here's how you need to adult. I didn't really have that. It was like being thrown in the ring with the bull and it was like, figure it out. So last year I turned 54, which was how old my dad was. And it was a really interesting year for me because I wanted to reflect on, you know, 30, 33 years he'd been gone. And at 21, 54 looks old. Oh, and then when oh. you get there, you're like, wow. And what I realized was I, I had to grow up really, really quickly but I learned at a young age how to be a heart-centered leader through my caregiving, to care for one another and not always even think or put my needs first, not to the detriment of my own health, mm. but always open-minded to think that it's not about me, which I think is a really great skill. And it really set the foundation for being resilient because I had no other choice. So I had to figure out you know, what to do with my paycheck, how to budget my rent, my car payment. Um, there were years that I had to work two jobs just to sustain living independently. But I don't, I don't regret any of it. I think if anything, many people have asked me how I got through it. And I think strength and silence is two of my superpowers. Mm. I think there's always room to pause. Nobody can ever take that away from us, even in the loneliest, darkest moments that we've all had in our lives. There's always room to seek solace and silence and just allow yourself time to think without judgment. And I landed up pursuing becoming a yoga teacher when I turned 50. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing that I just wanted to do for me because it was a challenge. I love a challenge. I love doing something that's out of my wheelhouse, out of my scope of expertise. And it's a joke because my my clients, when I started my case management practice three years after my dad passed, I had a lot of a lot of little kids on my caseload. And my name was never Deb. It was always Deb Crow. So it was either a pronoun or a verb. Deb Crow, when are you coming? Or are we gonna Deb Crow this? And then it it landed up where people would say things like, is there anything you don't do? Mm. And that's what I, I really want your listeners to think about. Because sometimes people say that. And depending on how it's verbalized to us, it can really hurt our heart. It can hurt our feelings. So I think when you don't have that early adult parental help, you just want to strive to be the best you can because you didn't have anybody kind of helping you drive to figure out who you are. So I can do lots of different things. And I joke with people and say, you know, I had an Irish Nana that said, we get one trip around the sun and make sure you spend it wisely. And, and that's visceral for me because of my dad, like mm. I'm, I'm at his age now. So I, uh, I live life by design, Andrew. I, every day I have a good time because we don't know when we're going to be called. So I don't, I don't want to wallow away in, in wasting a day, I think is, is, is kind of where I want to summarize my, my story and my message. And can you go back in time and think about a day or a moment where it was just really hard, you know, the experience that you were going through, the way you felt about yourself, the way you felt with what your dad was going through and 
you know, with other people who are having a different sort of experience in life. Can you remember a particular day or a particular time? Yeah, I remember standing uh, at the pharmacy with my dad and my dad had, I guess what they would call today bipolar. He had a mental health problem. Mm. I didn't know that. So you would be engaged in a conversation with him and then the next thing, you know, he'd be screaming at someone or it was really, well, one, it was frightening because you went from one emotion to the other. It was embarrassing because I'm a kid. Mm. This is my dad. I didn't know how to handle this situation, but I didn't know how sick my dad was because my mom wasn't around. Like she had her own issues. And it just, to be thrust in that position, I have such heartfelt emotion for any caregiver today. It's probably the toughest job in the world. But I think what I took away from it and where I'm really comfortable is I volunteer at hospice every week. And mm. I have people say, how do you do that? <laughs> it's, my, it's my normal. Yep. When I can look you in the eye and say, I know how you feel right now and mm. it's really relatable to me and but I'm just a little farther down the road with the grief process and healing my heart and and you will get there but it's okay to lean in right now and feel really really sad like mm. I've been there I've been there yeah. multiple times with my family and I think when we have that relatability with our clients I think it gives them solace and allows you to be even more approachable yep and how would you summarize, I mean, what you've explained is really an experience in your life. And how would you um, describe the lessons that you learned from it? You know, it's an old cliche, but it holds so much merit for me. And I think I've engraved it in my heart. Don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. And even when you can't see the light at the end of the end of the tunnel, consistency will always help you get there because if you don't believe in yourself nobody else is gonna mm. Mm. wow um you know i'm i i have a lot of emotion as you're talking and maybe i'll just summarize two things that i wrote down you know the first one was about um, caregiving and you know i made a decision five years ago to to bring my mom to Thailand after my dad passed away and it was you know sad and, and hard for all of us in the family to lose my dad and then bringing my mom here was a challenge because she was recovering from stroke and taking a lot of medicine and just in not in great shape and uh, yeah it's, it's been a challenge of a lifetime I never I never got married and um, uh, my sister jokes that I had my first daughter when she was 80 Mm. And I thought, yeah, in, in a way. And uh, now, you know, I, things have changed. I've managed to help my mom get back, you know, get her mind back and, and get her health back, which has been fantastic. And then, you know, we've been through so much together and we've cemented our relationship and so much that we've shared. But yeah, there's a lot of challenge and sacrifice that we, you know, deal with. And I think the once you've been in that situation and you've lost people and all that, I think you just have a lot of value to bring, like going to hospice, as you said, the idea that um, I've been through it and I've made it, you know, I'm not coming here with any pity. I'm not cutting, coming here with any amazing story. Like you're going to be amazing from this experience. I'm just coming here as a person who's been through it to say, you can do it. And that's a huge, you know, reminder to me. So I really appreciate that. And the second thing that you said is something that I always say, and I say, you know, don't give up on your friends and family, because even when it appears like there's just no hope, things can change. And I've watched my mom change. I've watched myself change when I was in my worst situation when I was very young and my parents didn't give up. So I think it's a real challenge that I really want to highlight to the audience and to the listeners that, you know, listen to what Deb says and don't give up. Uh, just when you think you give up, you know, that's the time to just take a break, but don't give up. Anything you would add to that? 
I think we have to always be open-minded and attentive because we get lots of signs every day if, if we're really tuned in and paying attention. So when people say, you know, this was serendipitous or I had a, a deja vu moment or do you think it was interesting that our, our past connect? And I always say, no, it was meant to be. Like things just don't happen for a reason. There's there's always, my grandma used to say, there's always a reason, a season, or a lesson. And sometimes it's all three, and sometimes we don't know which one it is. And I'm just, I'm always present. Whether I'm in a conversation or I'm just attentively listening to someone. I think that's probably one of the best skills that I would ask your listeners to to just renew when you don't know what you don't know or you can't see that light at the end of the tunnel open your eyes but open your ears too because the message is in your heart you just you have to have some quiet time to figure it out Mm. Mm. clarity over chaos yep just slow down and make this day a special day also well my last question for you is what's your number one goal for the next 12 months I have a couple. Um, I wasn't sure which one I wanted to share. Um, I'm really streamlining who I work with. I love working with C-suite leaders. A lot of people perceive that their life is amazing. It's not. (laughs) They're they're very lonely. They have worked their way up the, the proverbial ladder. And I thought it was a good example to talk about on your show because success comes with a price. And I see that price in health. I see it in mental health. I see it in breakdown of their relationships. And they're super lonely at the top. So they Mm. might have the fancy car and the, the cottage and the boat and the suit and the corner office, but... I just want your listeners to realize that whatever success looks like for them, it always comes with a price. So to be clear with an an alignment of mind and heart when they're making decisions, because success for me is about having a life by design. So the next year, I'm really honing in and wanting to work with certain C-suite leaders and I don't overload myself. I have a lot of white space in my calendar that I pride myself on. I book time to meditate and do yoga or go ride my bike or get outside in nature during the day. Mm. It used to be in the morning and I've evolved as well through this pandemic. We can't navigate unprecedented times if we're not willing to ebb and flow and change some things in our lives and in yep. ourselves. So. I'm just changing up my schedule and I guess I guess to summarize my answer I'm really creating a life by design at the next level for myself mm. well that's inspiring for all of us and maybe that's a challenge to the listeners is what can you do today what can you do tomorrow to start to create that life by design you know instead of stumbling or fumbling through so listeners there you have it another story of loss to keep you winning. My number one goal for the next 12 months is to help you, my listeners, reduce risk and increase return in your life. To achieve this, I've created our community at myworstinvestmentever.com and I look forward to seeing you there. As we conclude, Deb, I want to thank you again for coming on the show and on behalf of Ace Dots Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment Do you have any parting words for the audience? You know what? Live every day like it's your last because you never know. And that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our wealth and what we've learned from Deb today, our health. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on the upside.